Hi, this is Nate Nestle for Hyperactive Studios. We're getting ready to go over um, an in-depth series on Apache LAMP server setup. And this is for uh, web development, and uh, basically this will be a multi-part series where we go over. Uh, it's going to be a lot of videos actually on this. It's a fairly in-depth subject, and we're going to be going over different parts of the server uh, bit by bit here. It's going to take a while to go over it all because there's a lot of material here. We'll get into some stuff on security too, uh, how to handle monitoring. I mean, just so there's a lot of material to cover on this, and uh, it can be rather involved. So we're going to kind of dive in, take it in pieces, piece by piece for each video, until we can cover uh, a decent amount of it. I don't know if we'll cover everything there is in Apache, as there's. Uh, a good number of books on the subject matter but uh, regardless there's a lot of material here and we're going to try to get to where you're uh, really knowledgeable on uh, basically a LAMP server setup and uh, keeping it running and uh, running it uh, to where you can actually launch it on a live server and do it professionally so uh, with that said uh, let's start going into it now a couple things I need to get to here I kind of discussed it a little bit before. Uh, one, of, one of the things I did here is I started typing in uh, gedit, uh, and when I do, you get this text editor pops up. You can select this and run it. Now I'm already running it, uh, but the moment it does run, you can come down here and right-click on it and say uh, lock uh, to launcher. I've already done that, so it's already locked. So now when it, on my panel here, always it's here. Uh, we use this a lot. So we're going to use this text editor a lot during this, and same thing with the terminal. These are two of your most indispensable networking tools, uh, aside from the <laughs> aside from the uh, file browser. Um, these two are uh, extremely useful, and you're going to use them all the time. So might as well go ahead and just dock them on here because you're going to be using them a lot. All right. So with that said, that should be launched at this point. And we're going to type up this long script here. And this is the terminal, by the way. Uh, this script here is for installing uh, essentially a LAMP. Now, did I put everything there was on here? No, I did not. There's actually more than this if I want. Uh, but I didn't choose every option to install. Uh, some of them don't really make sense if you're running on Linux. Uh, like, for instance, if you're running uh, installing Microsoft database servers and you're running on a Linux server, it's really not going to work too well, probably. I would assume. I don't know. Maybe you could make it work. I'm not sure. I've never tried. So I've only run with servers that, database servers that were meant for Linux. So I'm not sure <laughs> if you can pull that one off or not. So I wouldn't honestly know. But regardless, this is the script I called lamp ubuntu.sh. So if I come up here to my file, uh, save as here, when I create this file, I can type in lamp ubuntu.sh. This lets me know this is a LAMP setup for Ubuntu versus like Fedora 17 or not even 17, just Fedora period or maybe CentOS or maybe SUSE or maybe uh, Mandriva. I should not even call it Mandriva anymore. I'm trying to remember the name. It's Mag Magnia or something like that. Uh, like M-A-G-I no, sorry, N-I-A or something. I don't know. It's something like that. Or Magnia. Or I, I don't know. It's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably murdering the name of it horribly, uh, but yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we're using Ubuntu here. Uh, Ubuntu is uh, quite a good uh, setup for servers here. But uh, anyways, I'm going to name it with a .sh on it. This signifies that this is a shell script, and that uh, it will automatically highlight for it. And then I'm just going to hit uh, my save button down here at the bottom. Now, unfortunately, uh, you see it. My save button is right there at the bottom, and now you can see it. Okay, but I really don't need to uh, click that because I already named mine. If you're doing this now, however, uh, you will need to uh, name it. Okay. With that said, one of the first things we need to do is run an update. Why an update? Because well, you really need everything installed uh, and up to date before you can run these other packages. It just keeps things from being screwed up. So basically, run your update first, uh, and that's what we're doing here. Then after that, after we do an update, we can do a sudo app install uh, dash y. Why is the dash y? Well, the dash y. Ooh, I need to put dash y in here too. Yes, dash y keeps you from having to say yes 
over and over and over again. So you can imagine in an update this could take quite a while if you're having to say yes, 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 yes. Say you have like, I don't know, 800 packages to update and install. Do you really want to say yes 800 times? Probably not. So if you put the dash Y in here, it keeps you having to say yes to anything. It just automatically updates it. I mean, you've already decided to update it, so just go ahead and update it. You know, you don't need to be um, asked to death to update what you've already decided to update. <laughs> this, is my, this is my point, basically. Um, so by saying dash Y here, it just says yes to everything. Same thing goes to this. If there's other dependencies it has to have, otherwise it can't install it, you're going to have to say yes to each one of them. So ideally, if you just put the dash Y in here, you don't have to do that, and so it's going to install Apache 2. And this is the technical one. Now, inside of like Fedora, you're going to have to say HTTPD for RPM systems, but on Debian type systems, you say Apache 2 instead. Uh, another one here we're going to install is FFmpeg. It's a video conversion uh, tool. It lets you transcode video for video from one format to another, etc. Uh, so that could be useful for server side to do video uh, processing. Uh, you may not need that. You may want it. Who knows? I just threw it in there. This is pretty cool. Uh, sudo app dash get install space dash y uh, and PHP 5. So we're installing PHP. We're going to install version 5. Everyone uses version 5. No one uses version 4 anymore. Hopefully not, anyways. <laughs> so uh, version 5 has been out for quite a while, and that's pretty much what everybody uses for the most part. Uh, but all our stuff, and so like if you're in Fedora or whatever, it's just PHP, but on Ubuntu it's PHP 5. So that's the difference. The 5 there matters. Uh, and then we can follow along with the other modules who are PHP. We have like CGI, for instance, and CLI, which is command line here. Uh, and then we have common, just base PHP stuff. Curl. Uh, we need curl. Uh, besides curl, we also have DVG. And we have dev. And we have GMP. And we have GD. GD is actually a graphics library. Uh, it's very important if you can resize images and things of that nature. So, absolutely want that. If you want to work with LDAP, uh, PGSQL. Uh, if you want to work with SVN for uh, basically doing server side programming, uh, well, yeah, and kind of like you code it over on a client machine and it's for a whole team of people who are coding together. And then through PHP, you can set up SVN um, with this, which is pretty cool. And you can do team coding, uh, and it lets you check in and out your code, find the difference between your code versus what's the code on the server, and you can integrate your code, and it's just a great way for teams to code. It gets kind of popular now in place of SVN, and so you can kind of replace CVS previously, so, you know, it's kind of... Anyways, uh, here's P-Spell, uh, Recode, uh, we have our uh, SNMP, SNMP, sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. SQLite, XML RPC, Tidy, XSL, uh, which you're going to use with uh, basically uh, your uh, da, 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 uh, XML, ADOBC, I don't know, sorry, without the C, <laughs> auth PAM for authorization, encrypt that you encrypt. Things very important. Memcache also important. Uh, MySQL. You have to have this in order to actually code to the MySQL database server. So very important. Just kind of like the SQLite one lets you go to the SQLite database, which is a file. Actually, it's not like a, this is actually goes up to tier three, and SQLite would be like a tier one. FFmpeg this gives you uh, code capabilities to access the FFmpeg and install from above. Uh, GeoIP lets you do um, geolocation IP type work, uh, and then here's different. Uh, Lib, Apache mods, so for Perl, Python, SSL, uh, MRTG, uh, some more SNMP, SNMP uh, monitoring and things of that nature, um, Apache here, pre fork, utils, Apache uh, 2.2 common, uh, Lib Apache uh, 2 dash mod dash PHP 5, Lib APR 1, Lib APR util 1, Lib DDV uh, dash MySQL dash Perl, Lib DVI dash Perl, Daemon dash Perl, uh, Lib uh, PLRCP, uh, RPC, sorry, uh, dash Perl. We have uh, Lib PG and then, uh, or is it PQ? I can't remember. Five. I'm forgetting at this point. Uh, 
MySQL dash client dash 5.5, uh, MySQL common, MySQL server, MySQL server 5 dash 5, Lib Apache 2 dash mod dash auth dash MySQL, um, my PHP my admin. This is actually a really useful tool. A lot of network admins use for doing a web based uh, administration of their MySQL server. Pretty useful. Uh, Python. Uh, MySQL Workbench. This is a uh, client. Uh, this is a you run it directly on the computer itself as a GUI program. Uh, this is more for developers. Network admins typically don't run this because you're going to be running command line like run level three. So uh, yeah, Tassel. This is what we actually used when we did an install of the initial system with the uh, uh, yeah. With everything, Vim. Let's just do uh, a VI on steroids. Basically, it lets you highlight codes. That's a lot nicer. Definitely prefer Vim over VI. Uh, also, I'm kind of pointing out that if you use Tassel, which is great, uh, make sure you do not uncheck anything, because it will just destabilize your system and kind of screw everything up. So you can only check things, never uncheck things, on that. Just FYI. Uh, this actually gives you a listing of all the possible Apache, uh, not Apache, but PHP 5 modules you can have. And so you can add them to this list of installs that we have. Uh, and then here's enabling those modules. So it's like this enables PHP 5 to actually work. Here we're actually getting um, our IP address for IPv4 uh, of our server. Now, key point here is that this is um, ifconfig, gives you a listing of all your stuff. And then you say eth0 be only Ethernet uh, card 0, be the first one, right? Because it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you have multiple cards, you could have you know multiple IP addresses for that server. But anyways, we're going to pipe this into grep, and we're going to search for inet. inet is going to be your IVv4 address. And then we're going to pass that to awk and print only the second field, which is going to be uh, the IPv4 address. So perfect. And that displays that. Um, here we go. If you want more information on this, look through my scripting series where I go over and break down some of the stuff because I actually do break down these different commands and you will definitely want to look through that uh, to explain that better. I'm not going to go through the gory details of grep and awk. I do in other videos, so check those videos out because this stuff gets involved and it's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, pseudo service Apache 2 start. To start it, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and activate the MySQL stuff. There's actually more stuff to do MySQL. We're going to cover that in another video. And just setting up users and, then, and assigning them to different databases for uh, with permissions and all stuff for security purposes. Because basically you don't want to manage things through uh, anything through development with um, the actual root account for the uh, database because it's insecure to do that. So we'll get into how to securely handle that and do that correctly. So that's the whole script, and basically you just need to input all these. And my apologies not for going through all of them, but uh, there's a bunch of PHP um, ones in here that will really help you a lot for doing code. Now you don't want to like cut out too much of this stuff because if you do, then people won't be able to actually do their development they need to do, and that is problematic. So ideally, you want to make it where people can code without an issue on your server and so if you're a network admin you don't want to like hold back uh, modules that would be um, a problem for people developing because essentially if someone can't develop on your servers guess what they're going to go have to go elsewhere and maybe even set it up themselves so through this actually I'm showing you how to set it up yourself but basically my point is is that if you don't have the tools that people need in order to develop their sites they simply won't use your service so it's best to put as much stuff as you can on here. There's, and I'm not even getting into other ones that you'll probably want. Like maybe you want KPHP, Zen Frame for Code Igniter, uh, Symphony, uh, G. Let's see here. Uh, maybe you want Joomla, or maybe you want also WordPress, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all very popular ones choices here. You know, and so you can install those too. Uh, in addition to this, and not having gotten into that. I might later on go into how to install that stuff and set that stuff up. But right now, I'm just going through. This is how you do LAMP, just basic. Set, well, not basic set LAMP, but here's how to do a, a full-fledged LAMP, more or less. All right. Save this after you type it all up, and then we can run it. So if I go over here to my terminal, 
and you might go, well, I don't have a terminal up. No problem. You can click over here and you can say terminal. Now, in the previous video, I actually docked this terminal uh, permanently. If you click this right now, it will launch your terminal, and then afterwards, you can uh, essentially lock it to the launcher. Right now, it's the same for me to unlock it because I've already locked it, but you get the idea. So, I'm just going to blow this up a bit so you can see it real nice and clean. Clearly, anyways. Alright, so, and then I'm just going to make myself. Uh, well, first off, one of the things I did on this here is I did MKDIR and I said scripts. And I made that folder. Now, I already made that folder. You can see scripts uh, right here. But that generate a scripts folder. And that's where I saved the file into uh, that we were just working with. So uh, I should mention that ahead of time. But yeah, you can save the file in there. If need be, you can move the file with the MV command, the name of your file, and then. Um, which case would be what uh, lamp you went to dot sh and then you could uh, just say dot slash scripts not too late to type the whole thing says so hit tab and then that would move it from there to there from where you're currently at to scripts cool uh, with that said though um, let's go see the end of scripts hit tab and uh, pop in there ls and we can see my script which is lamp ubuntu.sh now I could just do sh and then start typing in lamp ubuntu.sh and run it and that would work okay, of course I need to be root so I'd have to sudo that first so I'd have to say sudo sh lamp ubuntu whatever I'm not going to type the whole thing just hit the tab uh, and that would run it and that would work the other thing I can do is also give it uh, execute permissions and that works great so if I want to say chmod space plus x, which would be execute permissions for everyone, if I wanted to, I could say just for the user by putting a u in front of it, or I could say g for group only. And this only adds execute permissions to group. And believe o for other for everyone else, if I'm not mistaken. But if I just say plus x, it's going to go to everybody. It's going to be user group and everyone else. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I don't care, but probably should, but I don't. Um, <laughs> And if I do a dot sh star in front of this, it's going to be all scripts that end in sh, all shell scripts essentially. Hit enter, ls, bam, you notice it changes color. Green means execute. So now what I can do is I can say sudo space dot slash lamp and then run it. Or I could put the sh in front of it, right? So I have two choices. I can do this right here, or I can do the dot slash. I was going to do dot slash because I don't. It, either one works. It's the same thing either way. It's just I feel like doing the dot slash. But basically, I turned my program and I turned that script into an executable program at that point by giving it an execute permission. That's one of the deciding differences between, say, like Windows and Linux. Uh, Windows you can have a dot exe, whereas on Linux you can have a execute permission. So it's the way it works. So the extension doesn't matter. It's what permission does the file have to do. And if the file can execute, then it executes. It's an executable program. If it can't execute, even if it is a program, it won't run because it doesn't have permission to be run. Maybe only certain people are allowed to run that program. See, so it's handled through permissions instead of um, particular file extension or anything like that. So pretty cool. Uh, really smart system in Linux here, and I love it. It's quite nice. So let's go ahead and say enter at this point and run this. It's going to prompt me for my password, so I'm going to put in my password. And we are going to let this install like crazy. And because I said yes to everything, it's just automatically installing for me. I really don't have to do anything. I can sit back and let it do all the work. Now I could have typed in each one of those one by one into the terminal and been here like for an hour just typing them in but by typing into a file like this I really don't have to I can just kind of sit back and let it do it, all the work for me and then I don't really have to worry about it and it's just downloading installing everything I need pretty cool doing you know, one by one one after the other for each one that we need Which is nice, very very nice indeed.
and this is a great way. I highly recommend doing scripts for this. I mean, yeah, you could sit there and try to remember off the top of your head every single program you want to install, and you could do it all by hand over and over and over again for each server every time you need to set it up. But to be honest, uh, you're going to make typos. It's just going to happen. There's no way you're going to type every single thing and not make a typo. And then if you make a typo, uh, installs is not such a big deal because it comes back and tells you right away. And then you have to sit there and remember, or maybe you forgot one. Oh gosh, if you forget one out of that whole list, right? Uh, then you, then you, something wouldn't work, right? So if you want like consistency and a good repeated, um, I don't know, say, a uh, good consistent uh, product, if you will. You want uh, to have a good um, oh, quality assurance. There we go. That's the word for it. If you want good quality assurance, then you're going to want to script it. Because by scripting it, it's going to let us um, get the setup we want. All right. We're going to select the Apache 2. There we go. Apache 2 is selected. Say OK. For our PHP my bin. And continuing on. Alright, PHP mesh must be have a database installed and configured before it can be used. So they handle blah 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 blah. If you want if you are advanced uh, database administrator and know what you want to perform to configuration manually, or if your database has already been installed, here we refuse. You should refuse this option. Alright, awesomeness. Sure. Alright, now we set this up before when we did our install. So, whatever your password was, set up your password for this. Password confirmation for creating the password. And there you go. And we're up and going. And we're installing Python now. This is 2.7. Probably also want to install Python uh, 3. Point like 3 or whatever it is. Oh. And we're also insta installing the uh, MySQL Workbench now. And you see some of the benefits of doing this. It's just everything just kind of automated and automatically just goes in, downloads, installs everything we want, everything we need for our server, and then we're just good to go. Okay. And our web server is now started and running. Bam. Done. That's that. So we now have all this awesome stuff, and it's all running. It's great, beautiful. So, very, very cool. Um, this is a listing of all the different uh, possible, because um, we put that in there, so it lists all the possible PHP modules, including Tokyo Tyrant, <laughs> which I just find hilarious. Um, but yeah. Uh, you can choose additional ones if you like, uh, but these are the ones I chose. Right here is pulling my IP address. Uh, so that's the one I have for my server. Very cool. Uh, this is a great way of finding out. Alright, so there's all that, and that's what the script running. And so now we're set up and ready to go. Uh, just to prove it, if I come in here, go to another one of these. Uh, desktops because we have multiple desktops here. I'm going to go ahead and launch Firefox by clicking on it. And Firefox launches for the first time. If I come in here and I type in localhost, like this and hit enter, it comes back and says it works. Default web page for this server and the web server uh, software is running, but no content has been added yet. Yep. It's because we just have a blank page. So this is a uh, test page that is already generated in, for you by uh, the Apache server and basically shows you that the server is running and working. 
So by typing localhost in there, that means point to our loopback, point back to our computer, our server, and so we're guaranteed to work. True, I could also put in the IP address we just got back from our terminal. So I could have come in here and say selected this right here and then held down control shift C just to copy that and then come over back here just by clicking on Firefox browser. Oh, should just take me straight to it. Okay, it doesn't. All right, so click on the workspace here and then come down to the one where the uh, web browser is. Something like that. And I could also point, I should be able to point to my IP address and get the same thing. So there we are. And that's another one that points loop back. Or to put it another way, 127. Uh, 0 0.1 it's also pointing to this computer I don't know if they do IPv6 on here if it is it's going to be uh, colon colon 1 nope it doesn't know IPv6 okay cool well just had to check but anyways here we are with localhost and point back to ourselves actually usually if we have one of those yeah we absolutely don't have IPv6 set up interesting okay well there we are and that point uh, to ourselves, and this is our web page. So, with all that said and done, that is getting a LAMP server set up and going. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually start going over the different parts of Apache. Then, we'll go over virtual hosting, we'll go over log files, we'll go over uh, some performance things here eventually, uh, icons, I mean, just tons of stuff. Tons and tons of stuff. Um, some security stuff too. I mean, uh, it's all very important and we'll have to go over a lot of things. So but anyways, with that, uh, my name is Nate Nessler and this is for Hyperactive Studios and check out the next video because there will be a whole series of them. <laughs> Alright, I'll talk to you later.